Hello everyone, this is Elisa Baum. I'm Percona's Director of Marketing. We will begin in just a moment, but first I'd like to conduct just a bit of housekeeping. If you wouldn't mind, could you please raise your hand using the hand icon in the GoToWebinar control panel to let me know if you can hear me. Okay, great. I see hands. Thank you. Next, during this webinar, you will be on mute. Should you have any questions during the discussion, please enter them in the questions field within the control panel. If your question is uh, related to a particular slide, uh, please make sure to reference that so that, uh, that the speaker um, knows exactly what your question relates to. At the end of the webinar, we will take time to answer as many questions as possible. Those that aren't addressed will be answered in a follow-up blog entry on Percona's MySQL performance blog. In addition, a recording webinar will be made available to everyone within 48 hours. With that said, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, a talk on solid state storage for your um, open source database. It's presented by Percona's CEO, Peter Zaitsev. With that, I'll turn the floor over to Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, thank you, Alisa. And good uh, morning, afternoon, or uh, evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I love talking uh, about uh, solid state uh, storage or uh, it's also known as flash because I think this is this uh, amazing changes which impact a lot uh, our database industry for the last uh, few years. I would put one of the probably two biggest changes cloud and kind of phrase the solid state storage which have been very big changes over last uh, few years. So in this presentation we'll talk about overview or how does a flash works. We'll look into some of the technology which is available uh, today and uh, look at what does that mean for database uh, in general. A lot of things you have to consider uh, running database on flash storage is actually universal. Wherever you are running MySQL, Postgres or some uh, new and new SQL uh, or no SQL solutions that's essentially the same concepts and we look at some specific uh, opportunities how you can use the solid stage storage at the MySQL best. So as you guys know before it was solid state storage uh, there information we store and access in database would be stored in the hard drives. There's something uh, like this. Right, uh, those are the properties of the hard drives. Hard drives are pretty good at the sequential read writes. Right now, if you have uh, non-sequential uh, read writes, then your response time will be defined by seek time and the rotation latency. Right, how long it uh, takes uh, to rotate a particular uh, uh, a particular state, which is significant few milliseconds uh, of time. Uh, reads and writes for hard drives themselves would uh, really be the similar latency dominated by that uh, response time, right, the seek time and uh, uh, rotation latency. What is also, uh, as we now uh, start to understand, is important, what the hard drives, they don't have any specific write limits. We can write a lot of stuff to hard drive, right? And uh, it's, it becomes old over a period of time, but there is nothing specifically so bad about those uh, writes. Hard drives also retain data for a long time. What that means is I have some of your uh, old hard drives in my basement going to five years, right, maybe no more, and I can connect them and still uh, read the data from them uh, just fine. In terms of parallel processing, the hard drives process only one IO request at the time, right? Uh, some of the hard drives they support something uh, as uh, request uh, tagging, uh, like NCU. But what that means uh, is process them uh, one after another. So another property of those hard drives uh, is very important is what uh, we have a pretty low cost per, uh, per gigabyte, right, which is, uh, makes it very good if you have to store large amounts of data. Now, <clears throat> besides using separate uh, hard drives as uh, on their own, we can put them together and use them as RAID, SAN, or NES arrays. 
right, as uh, some of those on the picture. What uh, does that yield us? Well, uh, one thing is what uh, RAID controllers and specifically Sun storage will come with a significant caches, right, which will allow us to cache uh, uh, cache reads, which uh, can be good for some application, but it is not as important for databases because databases typically come with their own uh, cache, such as a buffer pool for MySQL, which uh, often can be made even larger than the cache uh, you have available on the sun storage. Another thing what we will be doing is we will be buffering writes using the write back cache. So you can uh, get a very quick write acknowledgement and then the system will store, persist that on the actual spinning disk over time. They can even give us an even better uh, sequential reads and write uh, speed by uh, being able to read and write stuff from multiple of those spindles and uh, in parallel. And they also can give us a lot better throughput at a high concurrency. So if you're hearing about the disk-based sun, which is uh, able to press, uh, process, for example, 10,000 of IOPS a second, that means at certain high level of concurrency. If you would, so would submit your IOS to a sun device just one after another, wait, uh, each time, waiting for a previous one to can see uh, to complete, you will actually have a high allow, uh, I, uh, latencies compared to uh, uncached IO compared to your uh, normal uh, hard drive because all those extra processing communication takes time. So the change to the flash storage I think is uh, something akin to revolution, right? That is a very, uh, very fundamental change in how uh, storage works. Now we're using flash chips instead of a disk flyers. There is no moving parts uh, and uh, uh, no six, which dominated response time for our uh, storage. What we use for flash storage is a type of flash which called NAND uh, flash, which consists of uh, multiple of uh, cells where each cell may be holding from uh, one bit for SLC to three bits for uh, TLC which are allocated to uh, uh, to the pages or read blocks and the data on the NAND flash has to be accessed in this block uh, space for reads uh, or uh, or writes. So those blocks can be seen very similar to the sectors we have on our conventional storage. In addition to your uh, read uh, block size, there is also something called erase block size, which is uh, how large blocks we have to erase our information in. And typically this is much larger. You may be looking at the page uh, uh, and read block size of 4K while our array block size may be 256 to 1 megabytes inside. Now, there is also something very particular uh, about Flash. What we can write the data to the area which was previously erased, but we cannot really overwrite, uh, overwrite that data directly. We have to go through uh, erase cycle. And if those erase cycle, Flash wears over time, right? Uh, it, there is a very uh, limited amount of times we can erase a given cell before uh, it degrades. Now, this is in more details how writing to a flash works. When you do an erase, we essentially would sell all bits to the uh, high state writer as uh, once. When we are doing uh, write, and do just that. This is, is the operation Flash has allows to do. But we cannot change zero back to one after the write process has happened. To do that, we had to erase and then uh, write, uh, write again. Right? So to maintain that process, that means that the Flash have to contain significant amount of metadata and rather complicated processes to make look like storage device with random read and write access. Now, as I mentioned briefly, there are different types of cells which we can see. 
Uh, and different types of cells in flash, they contain different amounts of bit per cell, uh, ranging from 1 to SLC to 3 at a tail C. What you can notice uh, in this case is what depending on the type of storage, the amount of erase cycles which each cell can do changes significantly, going from hundred thousands of cycles for SLC to something like one thousand cycles to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the TLC. We can also see what uh, the TMLC and TLC flash takes a lot longer to uh, a lot l uh, longer to both to write, which is called also program time, and to uh, to erase, right? Called the uh, erase time. Now, if we think about the flash storage design and what things are done to um, really make things uh, work, which are uh, which are different. First. Flash storage typically comes with a significant amount of cash uh, on it because uh, it's needed to support uh, those complicated operations. Some of them, I'd say all uh, besides their uh, cheapest consumer, in so they can persist that data stored in cache to the actual storage in case of power loss. And then there is a pretty uh, complicated uh, controller and a complex firmware which operates on, uh, on the flash uh, storage. There is much more software and complexity out there compared to uh, your uh, normal drives. Another thing to consider here is what your single flash device, being that PCI Express or being that uh, serial ATA hard drive, has a lot of chips which are working in parallel. So unlike a hard drive, it has an opportunity to process multiple requests at a time and they generally behave much better than concurrency. Now let's talk a little bit more about the controllers and what do those controllers do? Right, what tasks do we perform? One is called write where leveling. Right? So as uh, I mentioned, there is a limited times you can program a flash cell. Right? And uh, what if I have some uh, space in my data which is modified over and over again? Something, let's say, as a you know, counter of number of pages uh, visits in a page. Well, uh, what happens in this case is what the flash will be uh, made in the storage so it will uh, uh, constantly change where this data piece is persisted to ensure uh, to maintain uh, the l l same or as same as possible amount of writes across the whole space it has available. It also has to be doing the garbage collection. Right? What garbage collection it means? Well, because we cannot uh, we cannot write the data in the old location. We are constantly uh, writing the data to a new space and that means the old space will start to contain holes like a Swiss cheese of a data which has been since relocated. That means uh, what the garbage collection has to take place with other stuff being relocated as well so complete blocks can be erased and reused uh, as, a, uh, as a space. There is a lot of uh, uh, things like error correction, uh, bad uh, block mapping and other techniques like uh, read scrubbing where uh, device can be read in the background uh, to see if there's any uh, any triggering of an error correction. Interesting property which is specific to a flash, which is it's called read disturb management. And what that means is if you are reading the cell number of times, then the cells which are adjacent to, to that uh, over time may leak the charge and they may not be able to be read anymore over time. So that means flash controller not only have to care about the write leveling but often have to take care about how many reads have been done for a given cell and uh, if uh, it is significantly high then it may need to uh, reprogram that cell to, to restore those, uh, those charges.
Now we spoke about hard drive properties. So what is about a flash? Now in terms of flash, it's very important what the flash device have much, much more I, uh, inputs or operations per device. Where your normal hard drives would be able to handle, uh, you know, maybe a couple of hundred of random IOs every second, then flash can do hundreds of thousands on the high end, but even a, in a relatively low end, uh, consumer devices can handle tens of thousands of IOs uh, OS per second. There is a lot less random IO penalty, right? So accessing data in random uh, is not uh, uh, as expensive. Writes are more expensive if reads. We are very much limited by amount of writes, right? And we'll talk about endurance, right? And, and I will show how much we're uh, really limited later. There is also limited retention. What that means is if you take your expensive PCI Express cards out of the server and put that in the storage and come back to that after a year, you may not be able to do this. Uh, uh, a lot of those devices, they are not designed as a permanent data storage outside of a service. Right? We have concurrent uh, execution on a single device and uh, m the all fast devices, uh, all flash devices I have uh, seen, they, they can burst writes and do fast write acknowledgement. So when you write, they write the data in the cache and acknowledge that uh, by default. Now it's worth to note what some of them are doing that safe when they have a battery or supercapacitor. Some, they don't really care much about your data. Some of the consumer devices, they don't have what it's called power loss protection. That means uh, they will lose some of the data which we acknowledge as being written if a power loss to happen. You have to be very careful about this with database because they can uh, uh, cause their database corruption and data loss. Now, when it comes to flash interfaces, there are a number of ways they can be accessible in your system. There is Teams, there is a PCI Express devices, there is SATA and SAS devices, and also we can have something which is connected uh, to the system through fiber channel or network, something like a flash-based SAN. And let me show you some common examples here. This is uh, something called SanDisk Ultra Dim, right? And this is a very new generation of a flash storage, which uh, plugs in directly instead of your Dim slots, and with a, a BIOS update, you can access that as a storage device. This is the fastest interface possible because it has the least uh, overhead, even lower than uh, the PCI Express. Now, for years, we have seen a uh, number of cards like this from HGST Virident or this one from uh, SanDisk Fusion IO. At this point, there are many vendors which offer PCI Express cards, and these are typically, uh, typically more expensive, but they are also higher performance compared to your, uh, your drives. Now, we can, uh, from that, we can go to their uh, SATA drives and SAS drives like, uh, like this. This is an uh, Intel uh, device which is an enterprise level flash which uh, uh, is relatively, uh, relatively expensive but that is a which is a new, uh, it's consumer grade drive, but I like this one specifically. I use a lot of those for tests, uh, for example, because they do have super capacity my my uh, data being lost, and they perform very well too. And there is also this form factor, which is probably you'll find on your uh, notebooks and some uh, other devices, uh, MSATA, like very, uh, uh, small ways. And uh, this is example of their uh, flash appliance which is accessible through 
uh, like Sun, NAS, or even the PCI Express. Uh, what is interesting in this case is showing what you actually can uh, pack very large amount of, uh, you, you can get flash at a very high density, that's what you're, you're looking for. You can uh, pack the uh, more than 100 uh, terabytes in those 10 U unit right, with uh, sol solutions like those, violent memory. Now, when you'll be talking about a flash, uh, you'll hear the consumer flash versus enterprise flash. And they are depend obviously by performance, right, There's no explanation needed, uh, endurance, that is how much stuff you can actually write to this device before it's uh, uh, reached the uh, expected amount of writing it can handle. Durability, that is uh, how much we can, uh, uh, how durable uh, it is writing wherever writer uh, acknowledgement actually works where the power protection is provided. Uh, retention. Retention is a very interesting one because a lot of the server grades flash is actually uh, can be worse than retention and consumer ones. Because for consumer flash, for example, stuff you put in the laptops, it is expected you can put your laptop somewhere and, and forget about that for a year and then you expect that to be able to boot. This is not so much about the data center products, which are expected to be always online and maybe just taken offline for a short uh, service time. And also uh, encryption is another differentiator. A lot of uh, uh, drives offer some uh, built-in uh, high-end uh, encryption. Now something you have to know about their uh, solid-state drives is what they are all very, very much different. Comparison between those is rather complicated. Where with, solid, with hard drives, you can essentially just look at the specs and say, hey, okay, I need 2.5 inch, 150,000 RPM SAS drives. There are multiple vendors which provide those. I can get any of them and they have very much similar performance. So much similar, many vendors will uh, even support mixing different kind of manufacturers in the same, same rate. Right, SSD is very, very much uh, uh, different. Right, uh, you cannot just look, for example, at 2.5 uh, inch four factor and you know 500 gigs in size solutions from Crucial, Samsung, and uh, others. Intel, right, would be very much interesting. Evaluation of solid states can be quite complicated, right, because performance can very much change over time because the internal state is rather mm, complicated and a lot of uh, uh, inner workings are not very known for us, right? We may not even know how much resort flash space uh, is there. We may know how aggressively garbage collection is running, uh, so on and so forth, right? So uh, if you're evaluating flash storage, I think it's uh, very important when you don't limit yourself to doing, let's say, one hour benchmarks put that uh, under the load over a uh, significant period of time and watch the stability very uh, carefully. Especially on the low end, we have seen many cases where, uh, or let's say, you have a very good average throughput, but sometimes device stalls for you know, a couple of seconds where it doesn't serve any rights, right, and then it continues. Well, that is not something you may be looking from your uh, the interactive database. Now, another thing which is interesting uh, about Flash is to see how do Flash really fail, right? And that may be right, or so start producing smart errors uh, and uh, ask to be replaced. Uh, but in a lot of cases, we also have those uh, read errors, bad blocks, which we put them in the RAID, and good RAID will uh, kind of mask those from a user and kind of uh, relocate their, uh, their bad blocks. Now, a lot of flash would really fail or become unsafe to use and, uh, after a very defined amount of writes. So what that means is you want to really monitor uh, smart status for, uh, for your flash devices and they will essentially tell you, hey, you know what, I need to be replaced. Now, if they fail, 
you can expect it just to be gone one day, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be uh, very much expecting that you will get some uh, read errors from Flash, even though that's uh, uh, possible. It's also worth to know that there is a lot of internal mm, error correction functions, right, and redundancy, especially at the high level. If you look at guys like Fusion IO or Virident, there is a lot of protection both from the a single bit uh, failures, right, or single cell failures as well to complete chips going, uh, uh, doing that. Now, what that tells us about the RAID? Well, uh, I would say especially at the high-end storage devices like Fusion IO, uh, uh, Virident or AGST, uh, typically there is no good reason to do that. The cards themselves uh, would have their uh, failure rates which are very similar to your uh, the CPU rate or uh, their main board. Now if you plan to use RAID, be very careful for, uh, make sure that it has a good flash support. There have been a lot of issues, RAIDs providing you bad performance and actually sometimes even worse reliability when they are not designed to work with this particular uh, a flash device as well. Now it's also worth to note what some of their uh, older controllers or entry-level controllers may not be designed to work with the devices which can provide th uh, hundreds of uh, hundreds of thousands or at least tens of thousands of IOPS uh, a second. And they, their internal logic, uh, logic and management right, may actually provide the overhead and reduced performance. Be careful uh, with that. What I see a lot of used, specifically the higher-end solutions, is what instead of having an additional level of redundancy as a RAID internally, we are having something as a redundant array of inexpensive servers. So, if single, uh, so redundancy is provided on the server level. So, for example, I may be using MySQL master slave replication, and if, in unlikely case, my store flash storage has failed on that server. I would uh, just switch to the uh, uh, to the slave, right? Instead of spending much more money to make that um, uh, more uh, available. Now, it's also worth to think about how we can uh, uh, achieve that redundancy as in RAID. As I mentioned, some of the devices may have a lot of internal redundancy, and that often may be good enough. Hardware RAID may be an option, as well as in some cases. Uh, software RAID. Software RAID in particular can be interesting because uh, we already have something like a battery backed up cache inside the dev devices. So one of the major advantages of this hardware RAID for databases having battery backed up cache, right, and being able to provide fast acknowledgement is already there. We don't uh, need that. What we have to be careful though is a good support of the operation system. Until uh, the very recent Linux kernels, we have seen a very serious sort of performance regressions when you're using uh, some of the software RAID levels compared to uh, uh, just using uh, devices. Now, it's also worth to note that some modern file systems also provide us something as a RAID option. If you're using it, uh, ZFS or uh, ButterFS, uh, those uh, provide us ability to use uh, something like a RAID on the file system and that may be a very good option if you're looking at the solid state drives. Now, when you look at the operating system support, well, uh, I think it's important to note that the flash support in the operating system have over the last uh, few years sort of uh, getting better uh, and better and you are uh, should be looking to use uh, a relatively modern uh, version uh, because of that. Specifically things you may be working, uh, watching for support for is uh, support for Dream. This uh, means uh, our ability to uh, free some sort of uh, unused space on the file system. So it can be then uh, used by uh, Flash uh, system to better optimize the garbage collection process and uh, handle writes faster. Uh, sparse files also can be uh, uh, quite interesting. This is where we can uh, uh, have a files which have some holes into them, right, which uh, can be represented as a uh, as a zeros, right, which can again uh, help 
flash the store data, store less data, and use it more uh, effectively. Okay, now let us talk about the flash and the database in particular. Now, the thing about the databases is what majority of the databases in use right now, being that Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, right, all of them has been desi designed in the time when they store data mainly on hard uh, on, on the hard drives, right? So very much optimized for that. They're optimized to do I/O as much as uh, uh, as possible. They count on cheap sequential writes, right? They keep the RAID with battery backed up units uh, to improve performance, right? And they often don't really expect the storage to be able to do the I/O at that uh, scale as a modern flash can do. Now, I think at this point, uh, in my opinion, when you have uh, your OLTP database in production, you should be running that on Flash. It gives, uh, it's much more uh, cost efficient, it provides a lot of, uh, a lot of operational benefits in Flash. Those days, it's become very uh, affordable and available in a lot of uh, uh, sizes. When you have decision support database, you are dumping, you know, Bytes of data into Hadoop, yes, that's where you may be still looking to use the senior media. Now, the question, of course, you should ask is what kind of flash you should be using. There are a lot of them which are different in uh, more than an order of magnitude today in terms of cost per uh, gigabyte as well as have a, the, a significant uh, other properties. Now, when you look at the database performance, I think it's very uh, interesting to look uh, at the optimizing the I/O performance, like getting a better flash and uh, memory together at the same time. Right? This is a benchmark we did uh, a while back, and and um, uh, if you look at that, what is interesting between those graphs is what uh, the more the better fit to have a data size into memory, the less there is difference going to be between different storage types, right? So if you look at the, our database being a very I/O one, right? So let's say let's, uh, about 10% of the working sets in memory, we have a, uh, like five times difference between conventional rate 10 of opinion disks and fusion I/O. But then if you're going to your majority of the database in memory, that is going to be a few, uh, relatively very few percent, right? So in this case, uh, so what that means is sometimes instead of getting some very expensive flash, you may want to invest in having more memory, or it may be much worse. Now, what is important in this case is, from operational standpoint, flash allows us to get much faster warm-up times, right, and that's when we are getting the database up and running from uh, the ser uh, server which was called, as well as better things like uh, uh, the backups which don't really give a lot of impact because there is so much storage capa uh, IO capacity and so on and so forth. So to back it up by flash, especially because at this scale uh, uh, some, you can get some very um, inexpensive flash. Another thing interesting about their uh, flash is what it can tolerate a lot more I/O bound load, right? And uh, what do I mean here? Well, let's say you have some sort of uh, database transaction, like or your query, which you want to respond in one uh, hundred milliseconds, right? To execute that query, will uh, need to do number of I/Os, and uh, specifically in MySQL case you'll essentially be doing uh, uh, reads sequentially one after another in a lot of cases. Now, if you have a sort of time budget of 100 milliseconds and we have hard drive response time of 5 milliseconds, we can do 200 IOPS right, uh, right uh, at that time, while it can be 1,000, uh, uh, or what is it now, uh, yeah, I think I, I yeah, it's 20, 20 IOS for uh, 100 milliseconds or 1,000 IOS for, uh, for flash. The, and what that means is you can have uh, less feet of the data in memory and still maintain uh, the performance you're looking for. Now, another thing to consider is what the flash endurance 
really may be the top consideration for you. And endurance is how much rides you can really, um, uh, really support. And here is some interesting math I have done for a couple of different devices. If you look at the AG Splash Max, then uh, what they advertise is what they can uh, do essentially to four and something terabytes every day over five years. And the same device, if you look at the specification, is gives us about 1.4 gigabytes of writes a second. But if you look at that and say, well, you know what, I am planning my application to really utilize that much of the right bandwidth, then we will find what we will run through this device, all its allocated endurance, right, how much write it can handle, in just 66 days, right? Now, if you look at the more the commodity, the consumer grade stuff, right, the crucial, which promises us 400 megabytes right a second, and so 72 terabytes of lifetime rights, then in that case, it will take just 52 hours, right, less than three days, to burn through that hard drive uh, at the same uh, at, the, at the same rate, right? So, well, the good news, of course, right, is what those write numbers are all really, really high. Typically, we don't need to write data uh, as much as per, uh, as uh, and uh, the, what uh, makes sense uh, for you is to understand how much writes are we actually doing and understand what that means in terms of uh, uh, endurance for your uh, flash and how frequently you'll have to uh, have to replace that. So, for databases which have been designed in hard drive times, how do we optimize them for flash? Well, there are uh, a few but uh, uh, a lot of databases don't like when you have a page which was part of uh, to a hard to a hard drive, right? It, the inner DB is a uh, is a great example. The flash because it uh, writes data internally always to a new location is able to guarantee atomic writes relatively inexpensive. Fusion I expose that through their special file systems, or you can do that through copy on write file system as uh, ZFS or BT TRFS. Uh, or pretty well. If you are doing that, for MySQL, you can be using, uh, using skip double write. Now, you can also uh, look at making your IO path as quick as possible because, again, if you have a lot of overhead on the database size, then you won't be able to drive a device very well. What helps here is bypassing the cache and extra copying with your And what that means for MySQL, I want to use InnoDB checksum algorithm for CRC32, which is well accelerated by CPU, and use InnoDB flash method uh, uh, or direct. Now, we also have to adjust our IO cost accounting, because remember, it is different. There is not so much penalty for random IO anymore. And also because IO is so fast, the balance between IO right, and how much CPU power we have is different. Right. So that may uh, uh, impact uh, how the optimizer right, needs to be tuned and some uh, databases like Postgres allows you to do that. MySQL doesn't uh, uh, at this point. What it allows you to do though is uh, you can set the page size smaller for InnoDB, such as InnoDB page size 4 kilobytes instead of, uh, instead of 16 and uh, uh, for uh, some OLTP workloads that may give you uh, give you better performance. We also want to be careful with less prefetching. In a lot of care, uh, a lot of databases are designed assuming, hey, it doesn't matter whether I read 16 Ks or if I read the whole megabytes of of stuff because it's all going to be seek bound for our hard drives. But this is not the case for solid state storage. So we uh, prefetch still may work pretty well, but only in the case if uh, you are uh, actually using majority of that prefetched, uh, prefetched data. In a lot of cases, it's hard 
to really judge that. So it's the best way to try it out, mention benchmark, and make sure what works for you. The next thing here is merging on flashing. Right? So again, uh, what uh, optimization a lot of database would do, saying, hey, can I batch multiple writes? If I have uh, multiple sequential pages dirty, instead of doing a single page writes, why don't they do multiple of them at the same time, right? Even if it's not really the time to flash the I ones. This is double bad idea for flash. First, uh, because that actually increases the amount of writes we are doing, and we want to save that because uh, of uh, uh, endurance. And uh, the second is uh, well, because it's really not so much over to flash multiple pages um, separately when we need that. Less space on disk. Well, especially our high performance flash such as Fusion IO is rather expensive. So the less data we can keep on disk, right, uh, the better it is. And typically less data also means the less data being modified. Uh, what tools uh, do we have for that? Well, in MySQL space specifically, you can use compression. In InnoDB, uh, we can use 2x uh, compression. We can also use TokuDB storage engine, which is uh, wonderful for Flash uh, for a uh, number of reasons. But in terms of, of compression, it gives uh, us a 5 uh, to 10x compression, much better than InnoDB. And uh, TokuDB is available for uh, Percona server if you are uh, using that. Another simple trick is just archiving data, all data which you don't need off your OLTP system in some decision support system or uh, uh, wherever uh, it might be. There is multiple tools for that, but you can also check out the PT archiver from Percona Toolkit. Now, what also uh, you can should think of, about is do less writes on the uh, on flash. There are a couple of uh, solutions here. One is uh, in MySQL space consider using TokuDB. In additionally to compression, it in, in generally is designed to write much much less to the storage. You may be looking at uh, uh, 20x a reduction of amount of writes it does for IO bound workload compared to uh, to the inner DB, so that's very significant. What also may make sense is to use a hybrid flash uh, and hard drive system, uh, system where you can put some stuff on the hard drive uh, or, on the hi or on maybe the RAID, create hard or um, BBU, right? Such as transaction logs, bundle logs from MySQL, uh, some diagnostic logs like a slow logs. They're all sequentially written. They don't really need to be on the flash for best performance. Also, uh, consider using memory when you can. For example, configuring Team PFS and using that as a, a temporary, uh, 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 as a the file system for a temporary object such as Team PDR in MySQL can be wonderful. Also, what you want to do in InnoDB is to set your InnoDB log file size to be quite large. It may be in a certain amount of gigabytes because the larger amount of uh, InnoDB log files you use, the less flashing InnoDB will do from your, uh, from your buffer pool and so the longer life your flash will have. Here is an interesting benchmark we did a while uh, back where we would use uh, one of the uh, very dent uh, older generation cards and we would run benchmark with your uh, logs which are on the same transaction logs on the same RAID versus on dedicated RAID with a BBU, right? And you can see uh, what we actually would get a, a substantially better performance by keeping the log files on the RAID with a, with a battery backed up cache and a fast, uh, uh, fast acknowledgement. Now, another thing to, uh, to consider is uh, what flash may be simply way too fast for your MySQL instance. And it may not be able to drive uh, it to saturate that completely with, uh, uh, with IO. The situation is getting better. I think this benchmark is based on MySQL 5.5 uh, and things are better in 5.6 and uh, they should be improved even further in MySQL 5.7. But so far, you can expect that you can run multiple instances of MySQL backed up by a powerful flash storage, then it will, uh, it will improve uh, 
uh, it will improve performance. Now some other thoughts uh, in this case. First is when, when you look at the flash storage, you can't just look at the storage alone. The other host hardware really matters. Uh, things like their uh, main board and it, in its chipset, uh, the CPU uh, and so on, uh, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, specifically for PCI Express cards, we have seen uh, th uh, that to impact performance uh, as much as, uh, as double. Another thing to consider is because uh, of so high demands uh, on the hardware and utilizing that kind of I.O. Infra uh, infrastructure on the PCI bus or serial I so much, their uh, virtualization may have a high relative overhead. There have been a substantial improvement to virtualization over the last two years, but, but it's still, I think, uh, uh, flash is where the overhead is uh, uh, rather significant. And the third one is a network, right? Uh, now, going to your storage through network may have a, uh, a much higher overhead compared to your normal storage. Uh, that means, for example, it is important for technologies like DRBD, for example. Therefore, your normal kind of hard drive with no BBU, going to uh, copying the data of a network for the or DRBD had a very little overhead, but uh, then uh, you would upgrade such system to a flash, then a latency of a network will be the dominating factor in, uh, in terms of write costs. Okay, well, uh, they get into their uh, the end of uh, uh, my presentation and uh, uh, one uh, thing, if you are interested in uh, my school and more topics uh, to be covered, uh, we are running the Kirkona Live conference in uh, London in the start of November. We are welcome uh, to attend and there is a small discount coupon uh, available to those uh, that uh, attend this. Uh, webinars. Uh, at this point, uh, I will turn that to Alisa and we'll see if we have some questions. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Audience, if you have any questions for Peter, please go ahead and enter it into the um, questions panel in the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, at the moment, there are no questions, uh, but we'll give it a few minutes and uh, see if anything pops up. No questions. Oh my gosh. I guess you did a great what job. What is so boring? <laughs> Aha. Okay. We got a question. <laughs> um, why uh, NODB page size? Why should it be 4K? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you for the question. That is an interesting topic indeed, right? So, uh, a page by default, right, is um, 16K in, in ADB. Now, uh, think about that. Uh, what happens if I'm accessing a small row, for example, just 100 bytes in length, right? And my workload is heavily I.O. bound. Then in case uh, it is a, I have a 16K page, I will have to go somewhere and fetch whole 16K page in memory, right? Versus going and just fetching 4K page in memory to locate that, uh, uh, to, to that uh, row, right? For solid state drives, there is a substantial difference between a region 16K page and a 4K page. Now, also when I will modify that row, that page will have to be written back. And again, that happens to a full page, which will be 4 kilobytes written to a flash storage versus 16. Right? And as we spoke, the less right. flash storage, uh, the better it is. Now, uh, it's not free, right? Uh, if I use a smaller energy page sizes like 8 kilobytes or 4 kilobytes, then uh, that means there will be less space used by various system areas and the yield, right, mm, or the overhead will be high, right, and the, uh, the for, uh, for smaller pages. So that's something you, uh, you can benchmark and explore where it makes sense for the workload. Okay, great. The questions are coming in now, so uh, thank you for the first person to ask. Okay, so there's a follow-up question to that. Uh, should it be sh should it be aligned to flash erase page size? Well, uh, yes, uh, that is a that is a good point, right? Uh, in uh, in a lot, uh, it uh, 
can be allied to for flash rights page size uh, page size and that is a uh, that is a good idea uh, one topic by the way I didn't cover here uh, which is uh, uh, important but if you have an array uh, if you have a, a flash storage right, with a page size of uh, uh, 4K or uh, more, you also need to be thinking about their uh, alignment for your partition and file system because you want to be performing I/O which is aligned to those uh, uh, those boundaries, right? Uh, many uh, file systems uh, and modern operation systems will figure it out automatically, but uh, uh, sometimes it doesn't happen, and that will uh, Loot uh, will result in a performance loss. Okay, the next question. What is the preferred file system on Flash for primarily a read only slave? Well, uh, for uh, primary uh, read only slave. Now, uh, I can tell you what uh, uh, we're getting a lot of uh, uh, good results with a uh, ext4. With Flash, if you're speaking about Linux, while uh, their XFS is also pretty good file system and using Flash over uh, over a long period of time, which can uh, work pretty well as well. Okay, next question: What's the best page size for OLTP, and what's the best page size for OLAP? Well, uh, th that is a good uh, that is a good question. Now. When I speak about their uh, inner DB specifically, right, and uh, uh, the, in this case, the, in this case, well, um, uh, OLTP may benefit from a uh, from a smaller size, right? But, but there is a chance OLAP may as well. I think that is something what you have to watch your workload and uh, analyze that. And why a uh, smaller page size may be important for OLAP as well is. Uh, because of the way MySQL does joins, right? MySQL does joins basically through the nested loop approach, right? And that means that you may have a large amount of a random in your those random lookups are going to hit your table, then being those results through each triggering 4K read instead of 16K read may be uh, Maybe uh, appropriate. Now, classical, I would say, approach for larger page sizes for OLAP, it comes uh, from the idea of what uh, OLAP applications would be a lot more kind of sequential uh, scans bound, which may or may not be the case uh, for uh, for your workload. Okay, the next question is, would the recommendations for MySQL settings for Flash also apply to provisioned IOPS Amazon EBS volumes which use Flash behind the scenes? Yes, uh, the, the, that is right, right? A lot of uh, uh, the operations uh, out there would uh, apply uh, to uh, Amazon provisioned IOPS, right, or if you're using their uh, local Flash storage uh, in the cloud. Okay, um, next question. About retention, can you add a little bit more about what that does for Flash? Okay, so uh, uh, retention, that is an uh, interesting point, right? So when I uh, explain how Flash works, right, it has essentially this uh, 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 little cells which are supposed to hold your charge right for period uh, period of time now what happens out there over time it wears out right you can think about as uh, about your let's say bucket right if you use your bucket for a very long period of time well it can start leak right if you continue uh, doing that law using that longer and longer it will be leaking more and more so it wouldn't hold the water for a long period of time. The same applies to Flash, right? So uh, there is a really a relationship between uh, uh, the more writes you are doing to the cell, right? The more erase cycle it went through, the less its ability to retain the data. Typically, when you look at the Flash devices, they would give you those uh, endurance versus uh, uh, retention. And this is uh, and then we may guarantee, for example, what you can take the storage 
out of use case for the out of use for six months after you have done let's say 72 terabytes writes to that device right that is what we're being told now um, in all cases you can actually do significantly more writes to the cell but the retention uh, would be worse right so for example I read uh, about the experiment later when somebody would took one of those storage devices they would do amount of writes which was something like 10x from your uh, the, from what his nominal value is and the device continued to work but when they shut the box do down try to start and it, it was all gone right because uh, after power was gone the system wasn't able to retain the data and what that means is what you have to be very careful right if you are uh, using your storage beyond its nominal uh, endurance rating then you may be risking what it will work okay but then you shut off the data shut off the server bring it back ah, the data may be gone and that's I think quite interesting failure scenario which you don't think about for uh, with hard drives. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions, I think. Uh, any suggestions how to optimize my ICM based database running on SSDs? Well, uh, my some database, um, well, uh, Let's, uh, I think, uh, well, first of all, right, I would say you have to answer the question whether you, you have a really, really good case for, uh, uh, for my sum, right? I, I think uh, uh, majority of the cases are resolved much better with other storage engines being that in a DB or uh, TokoDB those days. Now, when you uh, speak about, uh, uh, about my sum, uh, you may be um, looking at uh, changing their uh, queuing on the operation system side, right? Because what um, uh, what by system for buffering the data, right? And um, uh, allowing that to perform uh, flashes more concurrently with the flash storage is very important. I honestly don't, uh, don't remember what the option uh, exists for that, but it's somewhere in the, uh, in the process for Linux kernel. I think that's the main one. Okay, and that brings us to the top of the hour. There are some more questions, and I will send these to Peter after I have a chance to process the recording. Um, so everyone will get a URL to the recording as well as copies of the slides. And with that said, Peter, thank you so much for your time today. Audience, thank you as well for your time. And we look forward to seeing you in future webinars. Thanks again. Thank you.